Hey buddy, I see you about to post some content. Are you talking to me? You talking to me? Yes, I am. I am you from the future. Wait, is this like a Terminator thing or is this like a back to the future thing? Shut up, dummy. Listen, before you go and post that picture of Cheryl holding Billy's birthday cake, ask yourself, do you even like this shit? Well, the team said I should post it, so... Man, f*** what the team said. Does that spark any kind of joy in you? So I guess Marie Kondo is still pretty big in the future. Yes, actually, this new season came out. Wait, lock it up. Okay, listen, if you wouldn't smash that like button, if you wouldn't comment on it, then you probably shouldn't post it. So what should I post then? Now we're asking the right questions. Shit that brings you joy, that adds value, that makes people's lives just a little bit better. Welcome to the Clint Malley Show, where we make marketing simple and more fun. And today we're talking about content marketing specifically. But let me take you back to when I was a teacher. So in high school and in middle school, one of the things, I was a language arts teacher, that you have to be able to teach students is author's purpose. Why does an author write something? And the reason why you have to teach that is it because it helps you to understand the content that you're reading. But that same principle, even though it's taught to us when we're in middle school and high school, is something that is super relevant for anybody who's trying to get into content marketing or better their content marketing. Let's do a little bit of review. Author's purpose comes down to three things. Is cracking me up how I'm teaching this. Again, I feel like I've taught this lesson 100,000 fucking times, okay? So, <laughs> author's purpose comes down to three things. To entertain, to inform, or to persuade, right? So, when we think about entertain, think about anything that's making somebody laugh, but also something that could make somebody feel something. So, for example, a horror movie is not gonna make anybody laugh but it will entertain them because it makes them feel fear, right? Uh, a romantic comedy, maybe, okay, maybe just a romantic movie is not going to make anyone laugh. Might be, maybe it's really, really serious, but it is going to make someone feel something. So think about This Is Us, something I think should be rebranded, This Is Sad, because it's super sad. It makes you feel something. So even though it's fear or laughter, or sadness, the goal of all of those types of content is to entertain. The second author's purpose is going to be inform. And this is pretty straightforward. It's just trying to teach you something. Does it make you learn anything new? Does it make you smarter? Does it add value? Does it teach you how to do stuff? Oh, you make it sound so easy. Does it allow you to see things in a new light? Does it make sense, right? So. Inform is just education. It's meant to teach you. It's meant to impart some sort of knowledge. The third type of author's purpose is to persuade. You're trying to convince somebody to agree with your point of view. Now, if you are selling something, you're trying to convince somebody to buy it. If you're a political candidate, you're trying to convince somebody to vote for you. Those are the types of things when we think about persuade. And what's really interesting is how that actually plays into content marketing. Let me tell you how I see most businesses with their social media content. So-and-so comes on board, they get hired, let's do a social media post for that. Wrong! So-and-so has a golfing tournament with so-and-so, let's take a picture at the golf course and post that shit. If I'm wrong, my entire life has been a waste. And it drives me fucking crazy. <laughs> now, the reason why is because nobody cares about that shit. I mean, maybe somebody cares, but most people don't, right? Like, if you were not you, you probably still wouldn't care. Even if you are you, you're posting this shit because you feel like you should, not because you're actually doing anything. That's just not right. That's messed up. And how do we know we're doing anything? Well, it comes back to author's purpose. 
Are you entertaining? Are you persuading? Or are you informing? And if you're not doing any of those th three things, like in a significant way, then your content is stale and it's going to get zero feedback. It's going to get no comments. It's going to get no engagement. It's going to get no reach. Here's what I mean. People tend to go to social media to get entertained. People tend to go to search engines to get answers or to get an, a question answered. So right, I type in, how do I make chili into a search engine? I'm looking for an answer. If I'm just scrolling through social media, I'm just trying to pass some time. I'm looking for some sort of amusement. So we know that social media needs to entertain. It needs to make people feel something. My emotions, my emotions. It needs to actually have an impact on someone's emotions, their pathos, their, the way that they feel. Now, if you go and you look at your social media or your company's social media or any social media, what does it make people feel? Does it make them laugh? Does it make them angry? Does it make them feel happy or sentimental? Does it make them scared, right? Like, does it entertain people at all? Because if your social media isn't entertaining, nobody's going to give a shit about your social media. If you're trying to be hurtful, you're doing a good job. At the end of the day, you've got to make something that actually makes people feel some sort of way. And that's okay. People should feel emotions. And the number one thing that people say when it comes to this is like, we might piss some people off. If we post something and it makes people feel this way, it makes people feel good, it's going to make other people feel bad. And yes, that's the point. If you're not making anyone feel anything, then you are lukewarm. You are just noise. You are the static. In order to be able to stand out, you actually have to be real and you actually have to make somebody feel something. In their heart, in their bones, in the blood pumping through their veins, there has to be some sort of emotional connection with that. There's tons of ways to do it. I like to be funny or to try and be funny. How about new? I like to um, be catchy or try to be amusing. That's the way that tends to resonate with me. I also like to be uber sincere and very genuine. And sometimes that comes across as also uh, something that makes people feel something because it's true, because I'm just being my fucking self, right? At the end of the day, if you're not creating content that makes anybody feel something, then they're just going to scroll past it. It is noise. And if nobody's commenting, if nobody's liking, if nobody's sharing, it's probably because it has zero emotion in it and it's not entertaining. Now, let's think about this second part, to inform. The best content is not just um, content that entertains, but also informs. It does two different things. So think about the TikToks you might see of people doing amazing things where, you know, they're shooting a basketball without looking and it goes into a goal. Or they're hitting a golf ball and it bounces off a series of a hundred different things and then it ends up uh, into a hole. Or people flipping water bottles or any of these like really elaborate mouse trap type of contract. This is like meant to suck you in because it's entertaining. Now, that is pure entertainment. There is zero information in there. It does not teach you anything, right? It doesn't really add any value except that it might make you happy, which is value in and of itself. But for businesses, that's not typically what they're looking for. Usually businesses have some sort of agenda. They have a product or a service that they're trying to be able to educate the public about. If you can make someone feel something and teach them something, 
And by the way, it should not be directly teaching them what is the price of your product or uh, how many customers have you served. That's not what I'm teaching. I'm saying like anything about your product or service that will just make um, a person's lives better, then that's a good thing. So I'm in the mental health space. We're talking about how do you talk to somebody who's struggling with mental health, right? Now, what we do with Sandstone Care is we provide treatment and therapy and those kinds of things, right? And so that's essentially what we do in therapy, but we lose no value with our customers if we teach them some of these things. If you answer at least yes to three of these questions, then it's time to get help. Try this the next time that you're talking with someone who's struggling with substance abuse or mental health. Dual diagnosis is when you have a mental illness that's connected with substance abuse or addiction. We actually just make their life better. And if they still need help, then they can find us and they can seek us out, right? If you, like one of my favorite uh, content marketers, Justin Brown, he does a lot of stuff on YouTube, right? Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we help you grow an audience and scale your revenue with online video. He's who I learned probably 99% of my knowledge about YouTube SEO, creating videos, that kind of thing. And so I'll link to him in the show notes or description box. But the thing about Justin Brown is he does amazing tutorials on stuff for free, right? Now he has other ways that he monetizes on that. Uh, but he's really, really informative. Is it super entertaining? No, but does it make people's lives better? Yes, it adds tons of value. They're doing it for free, right? So the next thing is we have to be able to make our content value driven. If it doesn't make somebody's life a little better or help them survive in the world, then it's not worth doing. I'm taking a half day off to come and help you out because you're my friend. The best type of content does both. If you can be entertaining and informative, then you have just hit a fucking home run. Then you have made something that is unique, that teaches somebody and makes them smile. And that's the magic sauce. That's the stuff that allows your content to stand out. This is going to be different for every single industry. This is why, you know, creators and consultants get money. It's, it's because they're actually able to do two things at once. You're not just trying to make people laugh or cry or feel some emotions, and you're not just teaching them by spitting out information. You're doing both. And if you think about it, isn't that all the stuff that we loved the most growing up? The ways that we actually liked to learn, where we can laugh and cry and feel something and learn some sort of value at the same time. That's really what like every single Disney movie or Pixar movie does, right? It has some sort of theme, moral or lesson that is trying to educate or teach us about ourselves at the same time making us laugh and feel things. That's the Pixar magic. That's the stuff that actually makes content worth seeing. So if you can make somebody's life better and you can inform them, then, and you can make them smile, you're winning. Now you're like, hey, what about the third one? Persuade, I actually want people to buy stuff. Yes, you do actually want people to buy stuff, but where is that content going to live? going to live on your website. Now, the last type of author's purpose is to persuade. And here, you actually have a goal. If you can make someone laugh and persuade them, hey, again, you're doing something real dangerous and cool. And the goal here is that if somebody lands on your website, or if you pro provided enough value to them through other types of content, and you can remarket to them through like a social media ad, then you were able to explain your product, hopefully in an interesting and entertaining way. But I would say that the key with that is you want to make sure that you're super clear about that. Where most people mess up is they try to do all three at the same time. I'm gonna try and make you laugh, I'm gonna try and teach you something, and then I'm going to try and sell you all in the same piece of content. Too many things happening. And it's okay to be able to separate those things. 
social media videos. I'm trying to make you laugh and tell you a little bit about something that can help you. And then if you come to my website and you click on a product or you look at a service that I offer, then I explain that service, hopefully in also an entertaining way, right? But the first thing that I'm doing is not coming out and trying to sell to you. And I'm not just giving you noise so that you tune me out. I will not be taking questions at this time. Top two mistakes that every business makes. They ask for the sale without providing enough value upfront and they post things that are not entertaining or informative. Ugh, I've never been more bored my entire life. And so, or they're just informative without being entertaining, and so people tune it out as noise. You're not going to be able to out-inform the internet. Really? There's answers out there. There is a huge, wide world. But what you can do is put your personality and your flavor, your humor and your heart behind the stuff that you create and that will resonate. If you are willing to be yourself, to produce content that engages people, that makes them feel emotions and teaches them something, then you have just tapped into the secret in content marketing. If you're in charge of any type of content at all, ask yourself, would you actually like this content? Like if you were scrolling past something on the internet and you saw your content, you weren't you, would you actually stop to engage with it, to comment it, and to share it? And for most people, that's a no. They do it because they feel like it's something that they just need to do. Why? They post a blog because they heard that posting blogs is good, right? Or they have a social media and they just make posts because they feel like it's good. But if you are not excited about your content, then you can bet that no one is probably excited either. If you are not looking at the comments or shares or likes on or views on a piece of content, it's because you probably didn't like creating it enough to give a shit. You have to give a shit. People can tell when you give a shit. When you give a shit, it matters. So I'll just give you a case study. Um, I was working with the company and they had zero Instagram presence. They were not active on Instagram at all, but I knew that their target audience was on Instagram and they needed to be on Instagram. Uh, and so we started creating some content. And at first my goal was to make you know, their grid looks super appealing. So if you looked at their profile, it was clear what they did and that it was aesthetically pleasing to the eye. And that's cool, right? Like you make graphics and you link to content on your website and that's all great. But what I was noticing is that the content that we were putting out there was getting the same engagement as every other person in that industry. It was getting like, you know, five likes, mostly by the people who are already connected with the company or who work for the company. It was getting shared, but it was only getting shared by people who had a vested interest in the company who work for the company, right? Like that stuff is not engagement. That is noise. And I had to look at my content and realize I wouldn't like that shit either. <laughs> I'm just being honest. <laughs> I had to say, okay, this shit sucks. If nobody spends their time to comment on it or to like it or to watch it, then what's the point of putting all of that effort into it? Why not just create stuff, even if it takes more time, that actually moves people, that actually makes them want to act? So I talked to the leadership and I sat them down and I said, listen, I'm going to create some content and I'm going to let you know how it's doing well. It's going to do well if somebody talks shit about it. If somebody feels frustrated about it, if somebody says, hey, I don't like this thing, then we'll know that we're doing well. And we're also going to get people who are going to comment good things. But I need you to be okay with the bad things, with the good things, because it's gonna make everything better. And they were, you know, a little skeptical, right? That's suspicious. Created some videos, I posted them on Instagram. I put them on Instagram Reels, which you need to be doing. It's pretty much like TikTok for Instagram. 60 second portrait videos, just like TikTok, but on Instagram. 
the first video, the first reel that I ever posted, 3,200 views. One post that was engaging, that had emotion and was also informative, 3,200 views. That's more views than the last two months of content got before that, right? Took the same video, put it onto TikTok, 650 views. Very first video on TikTok for that account, for that company. My point is this, if you're spending time just going through the motions when it comes to your social media, you might put on appearances. You might be this facade, like this stage set that people can look at on the surface and say, okay, like they're trying at least. Yeah, I guess. But if you actually want to move numbers, if you actually want to make more money, if you want to sell more stuff or sell more services or help more people, then you actually need to make your stuff engaging. Part of this comes down to giving the creators within your brand the freedom and autonomy to be themselves and to promote your product. Now, of course, we don't want any hate speech or anything that's you know not true to be put out there, but be okay with being different, with standing out, with making things without your freaking logo at the bottom right-hand corner of the video, right? That are just entertaining and informative. That's the essence of content marketing. Don't tell somebody that they have to wear a suit, that they have to uh, hold up a placard of the logo. That's not going to work. People can tell what you're trying to do here. Make people feel things. Empower the people on your team to be themselves and to create content that they themselves will be proud to share that they feel like makes people's lives better, that they tell an interesting story or show something in a unique or engaging way. When you do that, you're no longer just going through the motions and social media becomes this powerful thing that can actually impact your business. And the truth shall set you free. So if you're thinking, hey, um, social media has never worked to grow my bottom line or content marketing has never worked to grow my bottom line, it's because the content you created didn't make people feel things or it wasn't helpful or it was just trying to sell somebody something. My challenge to you is to go out there to be yourself and to create something. And by the way, I want you to actually show it to me. So uh, set, drop me a link in the comments. I wanna be able to see what you actually created. Uh, I'll share it off on my site. I'll share it off on my social media. And I wanna be able to see, is it real? Does it make people feel something, right? Does it actually teach us something? Does it inform us and make our lives better? Does it add value? Um, also, be sure to, if this episode brought you any kind of value, if this was educational or um, funny in any type of way or entertaining in any kind of way, please leave a five-star review. It helps us to be able to um, reach more people to get more guests on the show so that we can bring that value to you over and over and over again. All right, I'll see you on the next episode.